Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2018 general election Charlotte County recount. Uh, we're in uh, day three of this. Um, yesterday, we completed uh, recounting all of the vote by mail ballots, all of the early voting ballots, and all of the election day ballots. What I left here today is we're going to look at the write ins. Uh, as you may know or may not know, write ins are um, the law provides that if you have people that come in that qualify as a write-in candidate, if they complete the necessary paperwork, they do not have to pay a fee, they do not have to um, get any petitions, but the trade-off is their name does not appear on the ballot. But there is a line, and it says write-in. And if uh, a person writes in the name of a qualified write-in candidate, again, that person that has come in and uh, completed the necessary paperwork, that vote will actually count for them. So to, to complete this recount, uh, we also have to look at the write-ins and see uh, where those votes uh, fall. Uh, we have, uh, there's three races, of course, we are, uh, we are uh, mandated to recount. Of those three, two have write-in lines for write-in candidates, and that would be the... Um, the governor. governor. and Senator. Governor. Senator, okay, U.S. Senator and the governor's race, those two have write-in lines. So we're going to uh, go through those and see where those votes um, fall. Someone asked me, is this going to affect the results? I think the media was very uh, interested in that. Uh, it shouldn't, because of course these are people that are not uh, the candidates that have fallen within one half of one percent, but it may. And it may because uh, we've looked at the rules, and the rule says that, let's say, um, just for instance, in the uh, Senate race, somebody writes in either uh, Scott or Nelson, uh, and rather than checking the oval, that vote will count if they write it in. Now, it's not the preferred way to vote for those candidates, but the rule does say that if somebody uh, does write in their name and does not fill in the oval, we count. So it may actually uh, change a little bit. So don't be too surprised if there is a slight adjustment in the numbers. The other thing is uh, we have a total of 3,115 write-in names from all our ballots, from the 88,000 and somewhat ballots that were cast. Uh, they were all listed, uh, they were not segregated, they're all one big list, but through the miracle of a technology, um, Lou, my assistant supervisor here, went through them, he put them in a spreadsheet, and he now he pulled out, we we're very thankful for that, he pulled out the write-in uh, names for the, three can for the two candidates that have write-in lines. So we're actually down to, I think we said 499, with the number that we added up. I believe that's the number we're going to go through today. So that's, that's a, a nice a relief from the 3,115 that we thought we were going to have to go through last night. That's why we're here today. A uh, couple of things. Uh, just that 3,000 number. Also, remember, today we're just doing the races for which there are the recount. There was another race that there was a write-in and two, two write-ins, two other races. So we're not doing those. So that's why kind of the discrepancy between 499 and the 3,000. But eventually we will have to do those for the final election. Yes, but we decided we're not going to do it today so, so it's not to hold the recount up and get the results as early as possible. We ultimately will have to uh, count those writings, but we're not going to do it today. That's the balance of the 3,115. We'll do it at a subsequent date. Um, yes, it's a quick question. Is it possible that there's an overvote ballot where somebody circles? or fills in a circle and then also writes in a name, or would that have been sorted already in the overvote, or would that be something that would be in this this sort of as bin? Does that make sense? I, I, I can see that showing up uh, in our pile here. We don't no, know not what we're here. Not here. It's in, the, it's in the box. Oh, in the box. It's, 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 it's an overvote. So it's an overvote. If that happens, overvote. gotcha. Okay, good. We if, actually if vote by mail, it's already been done. Been done. Okay. As they come through, if it's one that was run through the machine, it got bumped into that over or under. Gotcha. Now these write-ins have been imaged, and we have them on the list in front of us. Uh, these chairs were provided, provided for your convenience. You're not limited to the chairs. You can roam around the building, or the uh, room as you feel necessary. Um, just please do not cross the blue lines. Uh, although, we're not really having any ballots. There's nothing to see over there. All the action is going to be right here. <laughs> so if you'd like to come over and watch what we're doing and see uh, what we're doing, you're free to uh, come behind us and look at it what we're doing, you're not limited to your chairs, okay? Yes. You mentioned writing, writing ballots, the uh, eligibility, the criteria, certain. How many people actually met the criteria that they're writing? How many candidates? There were quite a few in the governor's race, if you remember, when you 
when you voted your ballot. You had two major parties, and then weren't there a whole bunch of names on the equal? Those were those were candidates. Then at the end, there was a write-in line. Okay. I can tell you there are five for U.S. senator, right. and there are two for the governor's race. Well, the people who didn't who wrote in things that didn't belong, did you just get rid of? We don't count them. Mickey Mouse. That's going to be the vast majority. You're going, to see a, you're going to see a lot of Mickey Mouse. That's how it came down to 499 as opposed to 3100. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because we only we're only going to do the races that we're concerned with with the recount. Okay. The 3115 number I had last night was we thought we were with all of them, but Lou has now taken them out with our spreadsheet. Right. Thanks, Lou. You're welcome. Yeah, you. <laughs> um, okay, the bathrooms are down the hall to the right. Uh, we have a break room down there that you can also go to. We have coffee. Um, Milk, uh, juice, donuts. Uh, donuts, excuse me? No donuts. No donuts? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I need to address that situation. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a cake in there. Says the police me. There's a, even there. <laughs> there's a cake. Yeah. Yeah. You get up early enough today to <laughs> and bagels. get the bagels. Okay, so, you know, we want you here. You're here to observe. If you have any questions, please direct them to the canvassing board here. Please do not address them to staff. Uh, staff have been instructed not to speak to anyone. Uh, if they ignore you, it's not because they're rude. It's because we told them not to speak to anyone. Uh, we want them to focus on what they're doing, and also they are not designated spokespersons for the campus board, which is we are. So we'll answer all your questions. Okay? Uh, any questions at this point before we start? No? Okay. Let's begin. All right. So we're going to start with Governor, Lieutenant Governor. So I think for the record, uh, what I will do, if anyone has any objections or any suggestions, 